Hey, um, you know, this is what I don't understand about religious people, right? They talk about belief, right? Like, I believe in Jesus, this, this, or whatever they believe in. But when you going through something, they call it perspective. Oh, well, that's your perspective, right? So if you invest in somebody, right? See, like, say if I'm, I got a project and I'm asking you to invest in the project, then you don't have a fiduciary responsibility to the project because you invested your money. Now, I have a fiduciary responsibility. That means I have a legal obligation to give you back your money. See? So if the if the project go awry, right, then it's up to me to fix it in the courts because I'm showing you that your money good is just that somebody else attacked the project. Now, if you sit here and say, well, I gave you the money, I'm saying, of course, you gave me the money, but you don't understand that somebody stole the money. Now, if you on the streets, right, you got to ask, did the person who gave you the credit come steal the package? Because you got to understand, right, if you looking at this from a business standpoint and you going to this person and you getting a lot of product from them, well, you making them a lot of money. See, so now they don't want you to go to somebody else because you making them money. So they will rob you then you indebted to them, then they give you the same product that they just robbed you with and make you sell it for them. See what I'm saying? So now me, I saw the game. So that's why when they tried to offer me money, I didn't want to be extorted again. See, that's called extortion. Yeah, that's called extortion, right? So what I'm showing y'all now is I'm saying, well, now the other people who you invested your money in in the stock market, they need to do their fiduciary responsibility by telling you the truth on what happened to your investment. See, now what they did was they got bailed out and the investors lost their shirts. See, that is not the way an investment is supposed to run. See, but I, that's why now you can't invest in my company. You can't invest. You got to contribute your ability. I don't even want your money because you don't, you don't own the project. You don't own nothing in it. See, that's why I'm investing in you. And I'm talking about you children. See, I'm investing in you children so you can become a better investment to your children. So I'm showing you how I had to get through the, these circumstances to be able to invest my intellectual property in you. And so you can in turn invest your intellectual property in us. See, so I'm investing first. See, they call that in the Bible, I love you first. See what I'm saying? See, I, when you, uh, when I saw that the person you invested in didn't do their fiduciary responsibility to the, to your investment, no matter what it was, cause you are an investor in America. See? And so if, if, if America is not in, um, protecting your rights, it's up to somebody to, to, to love you enough to defend your rights until you old enough to defend yourself. See, that's a father's responsibility. See, so now if I am a father and I know that you got some children that was not old enough to defend themselves, they wasn't old enough to vote. They wasn't old enough to do nothing. Why then wouldn't I do my fiduciary responsibility to them so when they get old enough, they can offer me what I offered them. So think about this. If they say you reap what you sow, then I'm sowing love so I can re re reap love in return. That's all I'm showing. I'm saying, well, man, they gave me money 
and I'm returning love and the money to them and knowledge of of how the money was taken. But they sitting up there acting like they mad. And I'm talking about black people. You know, because the man say, well, what about the people who invested in your company? I'm saying, well, you invested money in my company. I am my asset. I'm the greatest. My wife, my children. That's what you was investing in. The, 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 the real estate, that was for you. See, that's what I keep telling people. I was building the house for somebody else. I wasn't building a house to move into the house. And I wasn't building a house to rent the house out. I was getting my money from the equity of the house. Then I'm saying, well, hey, I'm using my um credit to build this house for you. Now, all you got to do is pay off the house. The house yours. <laughs> See what I'm saying? So I'm just the mortgage holder. So that's what I was doing. I was becoming the bank. See, I was using my good credit to then give you an asset. So uh, then I'm going to show you how to clean your credit up. Because what you would, man, most of us ain't no more than $10,000 in debt, man. You see what I'm saying? Like, I mean, come on, man. 30000 at the most. A car. And you ain't got no, no, no new car. You got a used car. You got a used car. You see what I'm saying? So I'm doing the math. I'm saying, well, I couldn't do it all at one time, but I could have did it person, family. See, I could have took one family, cleaned their credit up. Then I had five credit cards. See, but instead of me saying you are a plastic, a piece of paper, see, you are a human being who I have made credit strong and now if you let me use that credit, I'm going to grow your value. See, because they have put our freedom on a credit line. So if you don't know how to manage your credit, you will have bad credit and that bad credit will result in a bad life. So what I'm trying to do is show you how to, how to fix your credit. And then I'm showing you how to live your life. You see what I'm saying? within uh managing your your debt load see what i'm saying see it's not about not getting in debt it's about managing the debt you have because if you you can't afford a hundred thousand dollar car but you can afford a hundred thousand dollar loan if you work collectively see but the problem is don't nobody want you to have a hundred thousand dollar car so they not gonna help you get it and that is the crime, right? Say, well, why wouldn't you help me get a $100,000 car so I can help you get a $200,000 car? I might not want nothing but this $100,000 car, but I done learned how to get a $200,000 car, but that ain't what I want. See, I always wanted an old Corvette, not a new one. See, I could have got a new one, but I didn't want a new one. I wanted an old one. See what I'm saying? So that's what I'm telling you. It's not about what people think is about what you think. It's not about what people want for you. It's about what you want for you. So that's why I'm saying, I'm not trying to get y'all to do for me. I'm trying to get y'all to do for yourselves. 